What's up? So with the upcoming conclusion of season seven in Fortnite, I thought it would be really interesting today to go back, look at every single event that's ever happened in the game and just rank them from worst to best. There's been a lot of really cool events that have changed the map and changed the game. Um, and then I feel like there's been some events that really just kind of fell flat on its face. And so I just thought it would be cool to get a little nostalgic uh, with season eight coming up and, and look at all this. Now, before we do get into it, uh, if you guys are new to the channel and could help me out uh, to 2.5 million subscribers, it's, I don't know, to me, it's a big number just because it's a quarter of, of 10 million. If you could help me out in, get, in getting there uh, and subscribe to the channel, that would be most appreciated. But let's do this. All right, so coming in at number 13, this is the New Year's Eve event. Basically, Epic Games just put some fireworks into the map, and um, it, it really wasn't uh, anything special. But it wasn't meant to be special, and that's why it's the lowest ranking spot. It was just a nice little addition that Epic Games put in uh, just to celebrate a new year. This is the only majorly insignificant thing on this list, but I thought it would be important to include a, a very baseline thing just so we can kind of build up. So anyways, this will take us to our number 12 spots as really the lowest ranking significant event on the list. And I'm actually going to put this as the recent ice storm. So when we're doing this list, we're looking at things that happened live, not live, um, and, and really things like, you know, it could be just an event itself or it could be an event and what that event does to the map. The actual live events of the Ice Storm, the Ice King basically just uh, getting like this projection of himself and, and, and throwing snow across the entire map, that I think was actually pretty neat, but the implication of what that led to was just really not that cool in my opinion. Because what it did is it covered the entire map in snow, added husks to the map, and added fog. Two of those things have already been done before, and that's why I feel like this event was a failure. The Ice King himself was very cool. We had that buildup of him in this little egg or something, uh, at the top of Polar Peak, but really what it did and what it led to was just something we, things we had already seen. We'd already seen husks in the map from the Fort Nightmares event, and on Christmas Day, Epic did randomly decided to make the entire map snowy. And I'm more forgiving on the husks because the idea behind this was that there was a little bit of Kevin left uh, behind and basically the Ice King used that, apparently that's what the lore says anyways. Um, but to me, the snow thing was just poorly executed. Because when people saw that the map was covered in snow, they said, oh, the map is covered in snow again. It wasn't this, whoa, finally, something people have been asking for for a year. Um, it, it was just like, oh, they did that on Christmas. So while in a one-to-one -one comparison, I think that this event was actually better than Fort Nightmares, the fog worked well with the husks. Ultimately, I'm just ranking it low because I think it, it, just, it just didn't go over all that well. And most importantly, it was just nothing original. And moving on to number 11, this is going to be Fort Nightmares. The only reason I'm ranking this higher than the ice event is just simply because it was the first and it was actually kind of original. I think it was kind of poorly executed on storyline in the sense that, okay, we've got this cube and it's doing all this stuff, but I still don't really understand the purpose of the cube, where it was from, what it did, why it made husks and zombies into the map. I don't understand that. I don't know if maybe just the Fortnite community is not as good at solving puzzles as perhaps the zombies community is, but to me there was just a lot left out of this whole event and even, you know, as it continued in with the Ice King. I didn't really like the husks, um, I felt like there were too many of them in this event, and while I know a lot of people did because they gave you shield and they gave you guns, I really just think that this event was um, one of the worst in Fortnite history. Now, moving on to our number 10 spot, I think this is the first event that's relatively significant and kind of cool. Uh, this is the cube melting into Loot Lake. So the actual event itself was very exciting because people had been waiting to see what was going to happen with the cube for a very long time. And I think everyone was pretty satisfied with the end result. We had a week of a ridiculous, chaotic, bouncy loot lake. Um, it wasn't something that was obviously going to be around forever. I think it was in the game for the perfect amount of time. It was fun, it was silly, and we kind of finally had a conclusion. And a conclusion that continued on into Season 6. It wasn't a huge event, it wasn't an overly exciting event, but for what it was, I really liked this one. And I think a lot of players have, have good feelings about this one. It was just, it's fun. It was, it was what it was. Now moving on to number 9, this is going to be the crack closure. So for those of you that don't know, the rift or crack closure, as some people call it, was the end of the main rift theme. And what actually resulted of the rift closing just before it did was the introduction of the cube. 
that was the actual event, um, and I think that was really neat. The, the community was very confused as to what was going on, there was no context around it, um, and it, it was exciting. It was like, whoa, what's gonna happen now? Before this, there just wasn't a lot going on storyline-wise or event-wise with Season 5, so it, it finally brought some excitement to the game. The cube then went on to roam around the map, adding a gravitational field around it, giving players shield, but also taking the shield if they got too close. Um, it was a very interesting time. It was confusion and excitement, and while the ultimate conclusion of this, which would be the butterfly effect, wasn't my my favorite. Th this moment for me was really fun because it was just like, what's going on? It was so much interest and, and I really did like this time. Ultimately though, it really didn't do a ton to the map, so it's only gonna come in at nine. So moving on to our number eight spot, this is going to be the Snowy Island. This was basically the buildup of the end of season six, um, which then would lead us into season seven and the change of the map. So this basically started with a sort of storm, a white, island in, in the distance uh, as people started realizing, hey, that's getting closer to our map. And to me, this was another really cool one because it started leading to a lot of speculation and I think very quickly people picked up, hey, what if that's another island and it's going to attach onto our island, which is actually obviously what happened. It was a fun buildup as to what was going to happen for season seven, but in my opinion, same as the ice storm event, it kind of ended up falling flat on its face. I personally don't think season seven was all that exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, storyline wise, really just kind of a continuation of season six and I still don't know why everything is connected and what's going on. But more importantly, I mean, if you just look at the implications of the actual map itself, um, not good either. If you looked at the video I did where I asked you guys what your favorite locations are, none of these new snow locations ranked high. Of the 30 locations I asked you guys to rank, Happy Hamlet was 17, Frosty Flight's 15, and Polar Peak was only 12. The addition of the snow map really just didn't do much to influence the way that the map flows, and if anything, actually discouraged I, people, I feel like, from going down to like Greasy in that area. So in my opinion, not a hugely successful event. Now moving on to number seven, this is going to be the Butterfly event. So this is uh, right smack dab in the middle-ish. Um, good event, not great. So this was a good event. It, it, it wrapped everything up nicely. And the thing that I think is most significant is it showed Epic Games um, more on the, 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 the tech side of things. It showed their aptitude. They did a real time live map change. That is incredible. If you think how many people were playing on Fortnite at that time, I honestly can't believe that they were able to completely change the map during that butterfly event. The live event itself was very cool, and, and, and I liked it, but ultimately I just think that there were some definitely better things going on. Ultimately though, it led to the end of Husks and uh, a new and better loot lake, so it did have good, and, uh, good implications for the map. And followed by this at number six, this is actually going to be the floating island event. So this went on for a couple of weeks, and I really liked this. Finally, it felt like Loot Lake was cool. Um, we had, at the start of season six, the cube float up and take that little house up with a bunch of land, and we just had this ridiculous area for, for fighting. Um, it was hectic. This area was busier than Tilted is, um, and ever has been, and it was just a lot of excitement again. It then continued to go all around the map, and what I really liked about that was you always had a, 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 a constantly changing map. I think that was really neat. Is oh, it's it's over here now. Okay, now this area of the map is different because of this. You got to watch over people flying on you. Um, it, it was constantly changing the map every day, and to me that was really cool. It wasn't my favorite event, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. And moving on to our number five spots, this is going to be the rift. Now this isn't a reference directly to the rocket launch, which I attribute more to season four, but actual, uh, more, more so um, the rift opening up and what would follow from there, which was the start of season five. In my opinion, this was the best way they've ever done a map change. It was just so cool. I mean, you had things starting to pop in the map that didn't make sense. And then all of a sudden, phew, like Moisey Mire and that whole area is rifted out and you've got this new desert biome. And most importantly, is the location was successful. Even today, three seasons later, where you guys are probably much more bored of these locations for dropping, okay? Paradise Palms was ranked seven and the little Mexican Pueblo village thing was ranked five, three months after them being introduced. 
In my opinion, this just shows that it was a much better implemented event than the snow event. Now, moving on to number four, uh, this is an event that really, well, let, let's talk. The meteor events is number four. Um, and this was the first major event that happened in Fortnite. This was the first actual event that got the community excited. I think I have a lot of nostalgia for this, which I'm willing to admit, but if you think about it, you had this weird thing up in the sky and it was giving off noises and it would make your controller rumble and people were just very confused. Like, what is, is going on? There was so much excitement and then you started having meteorites coming down to the earth and people were saying, oh my God, Tilted Towers is going to get hit by the meteor. Which never ended up happening, but to me, being the first event, I, it, it was obviously like going to incite more hype just because nothing like this had ever happened before, but I really do think it was implemented well. Obviously there is going to be a little bit of rose tinted glasses for this event, but in my opinion anyways, it was a really good one. And if anything, it's really the event that started every other event. Anyways, moving on to number three, this is going to be the Marshmallow event. So this is something that it, it literally didn't do anything to the map. Um, and I just want to take this time to just give Epic Games props for what this was. <laughs> A really, really, really smart marketing move. Okay, you take this cool brand, you mix it into Fortnite, and you sell something related to this mixer, obviously the, the uh, the, the marshmallow skin. I don't know how much Epic Games made that day and the days coming up to this event, but holy crap, I bet it was a lot of money. As far as the actual event goes, um, I think it was a huge success. Everyone seemed to really like it. I unfortunately wasn't there for it, but watching it back, it looked really cool. And again, while it, it didn't really do anything, I think it was just, uh, it was just cool. It's another thing that just shows how competent Epic Games is, and uh, I really applaud them for this event, even though it, it didn't do anything to the map. It was cool, and, and that's why we're putting it here. Now, before we get down to our number two, I want to give a quick honorable mention. I'm recording this video on Monday, February 11th, and there's been a bunch of earthquakes going on around the map over the last week. Um, we don't know what this is going to build up to, so I don't want to actually include this event that's currently ongoing on the list, but I just thought it would be important to make note of it. Moving on to number two, this is going to be the rocket launch. I can see a lot of people ranking this as the number one spot, which is very fair and really it's going to come down to your own preference. For me though, the rocket launch is the second best. The rocket launch was the first ever live event and I think that is something that deserves a lot of credit. They hinted at the Tilted Towers update. There was a storyline leading up to it with the visitor launching it off. Um, and it was just a really cool thing that had never happened like in video gaming ever. That is crazy. That, that, like, that is a huge, huge monument. It was, it was phenomenal. And I, I, even just talking about it, I almost want to put it at number one, um, which again, it, it, it's, it's so close. It like really just comes down to, to preference. It set up for season five perfectly. Um, and and it, it was just really cool. But I still do want to know where those riffs came from. Um, I don't understand. If anyone could help me, that would be great. Anyways, though, um, moving on to the number one spots on our list, I am going to give this up to the meteorite hitting the map. This was the conclusion of the buildup to the first ever event in Fortnite. Yes, we saw changes with the maps like, oh, Tilted Towers is now magically in here, but the meteorite, season four, was I think really the start of Fortnite as we know today. Fortnite that's got things constantly going on with the map. And it was just so game changing. Just, okay, giant meter, there's got this like the OG dusty divot where there were no trees and hop rocks. That was just so much fun. And while you might like the rocket event more because it was the first ever live event, the meteor was the first ever event. It significantly changed the map. And while yes, it did destroy my favorite location in the game, factories, I'm okay with it because it was just really cool. Obviously number two and one are really um, gonna be very, very uh, nostalgic to me, but ultimately I think that they were the two best events in the game, mainly because they were the first. <laughs> Anyways, that is going to wrap our video up. Um, I'm curious as to what you guys think season eight is gonna bring. I. I don't know, man. Dragons, earthquakes. I don't really know. Maybe things coming up from the ground. The dragons. I don't know. Um, but at the end of the day, if you guys did enjoy this video uh, and you are new to the channel, if you could subscribe, that would be most appreciated. And if you're already subscribed, maybe I earned your like. Um, 
Oh, I've got a survey going on, I think, in the top link in the description. So if you could also do that, that would be great. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Peace. None of these new snow locations ranked high. I love that I can now use these as data for other videos. This is so cool.